Hi everyone, welcome to your fifth Roblox scripting tutorial, and in today's video we're going to be looking at variables. But right before that, don't worry if you're new, um, this is the homework from the last video, and by the way guys, I do give homework up at the end of videos, at the end of scripting tutorials, and you guys can complete that, and in the next video we'll take it up. So for last video, this is really simple, you know, just player, we use the player removing event, and then we uh, print player.name, you don't even need any of this, this is a valid answer. And if I hit play, I hit stop, I leave the game. As you can see, it says uh, my username, and yeah, that's basically, uh, that's basically it for the uh, answer to the homework. But now let's get into variables. So what is a variable? A variable is something that holds a piece of data that we can access later in the game. Say at the beginning of the game, we created a variable and we stored who the murderer was, or who was it for a game of tag. And then later in the game, if we wanted to know who was it, we could easily find out by referencing the variable. So I'll show you guys real quick. I'm going to create a variable. So to do this, all we do is we type local, hit space, and now we name our variable. I'm going to call this my variable. And remember, it can be anything like tomato if we wanted it to be, but I'm going to call it my variable. And this variable um, can be set to anything, so any t uh, any data type. Uh, if you remember, we looked at data types in the first or second video, and data types are what variables can be set to. So, um, or any data type, I should say. So basically, I'm gonna uh, you know show you guys some examples. So I can set this to hello, and then after that, what we can do is access a variable within a print statement. Uh, so sorry if this is a bit complicated, but right here, if I if I uh, hit run, it's gonna print hello. And that's ba uh, that's basically just because my variable will equal hello as a string, and it will be here. This whole piece of code, this whole script, is essentially the same thing as just this line right here. And obviously you might think, that's more code, why would I do that? Um, variables are probably the most useful thing in Studio, in scripting, so yeah, don't be fooled by that. This is just a you know two-line example to explain how variables work. So, um, you know, vari variables can be used in a variety of ways, as I said earlier, like an it game, if you wanted to store the, uh, if a tag game, rather, or if you wanted to store who the murderer was in Murder Mystery and access it later, if the murderer, uh, you know, won, we could do print murderer.name, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I do want to go over how we can change variables in a script, so, right here, we're doing the, uh, you know, whole print my variable thing, but what if I do my variable equals 50 what happens or obviously remember it's a number we don't have to put it inside a string and if I hit run it's gonna print 50 it's not gonna print hello and that's because we set the we updated the variables uh, data we up we updated what it was holding I wanna go over a uh, the box analogy so a variable is like a box and I'm putting the string inside the box the strings value is hello and I'm putting the string inside this uh, inside this my variable box and then later when we do print the script says okay um, and there's printing my variable so let's open the my variable box and put whatever is in the box right here and let's print hello because that's what it thought but obviously we updated it here so we took hello out of the box and we put 50 in that's why I printed 50 so I want to go over you know a few conditions actually we'll look at later in the video we're gonna be looking at you know a few conditions to variable names but other than that we've also looked at how to set the value of a variable and how to update a variable so now I'm going to show you guys how variables are useful. As uh, you know, you might have been thinking, instead of writing all of those lines, we could just write one line with hello. I'm going to show you guys why variables are really, really useful. So for that, I'm actually going to go to the base plate. Um, let's see, inside the workspace, let's go to the spawn location. Let's insert a... Uh, let's see, what do we want to insert? Let's insert you know, something random. Let's insert a pathfinding link. And then inside this link, let's insert a uh, part. And there we go. Now our part is here. And let's uh, let's see what we can do with a script. I'm gonna quickly name the part to something memorable, like uh, a cool part. And inside the script, let's go ahead and change the color of the part. Let's make a little disco thing. But before that, let's just change it once. So we're gonna uh, real quick before we uh, create a variable, let's do game dot workspace. And then right here we can see spawn location. So game dot workspace dot spawn location dot pathfinding link dot cool part because we go workspace and then these are all the children right here and we want to go to spawn location these are the children we go want we want to go to pathfinding link and then go to this child right here cool part and then from there what we want to do is cool part 
dot color equals color three dot new. Remember, we did look at data types, so there's strings, uh, integers. Color three or colors are also a different kind of data type, so uh, yeah, that's a, that's how you set a color of a part. And we're just gonna go ahead and make it red. Hit run, and as you can see, the part's color has changed to the color we set it to. It looks a bit orange. Yep, uh, I think I did select some orange there, but yeah, that, that's not important right now. So as you can see, this was a really long line. I'm not even uh, you know fully zoomed out. I can still scroll through it. So this line is really long, and we need to fix that. So what I'm going to be using is I'm just going to copy this much right here, and after that, what we can do is create our variable. So we can do local part equals game dot workspace dot spawn location dot pathfinding link dot cool part. And now all we have to do is part dot color equals color three dot new, and then the color right there. Now, obviously, uh, before if we wanted to do this, we had to type uh, you know all of this out right here, and we also had to add uh, this line right here. And say we wanted to do it multiple times, we have to type all of this out. For now, I'm going to get rid of uh, you know all of this. I'll leave the variable there, even though we're not using it just for now. And I'm going to change up the colors a little bit. And we're going to go with a different color over here, a different one over here, and we'll just change this one to something like white, and we'll leave that line. Now in between here, I'm going to add a few weights. Uh, this one will be uh, weight 1, and we'll just do the same for all. We'll add all these weights in here. And now, uh, I'm going to show you guys, this is really, really long, as you can tell. And basically what we can do is use the part variable to reduce it. If I hit play, it does work, but that was a lot of code to write. Now with this variable we created, all we have to do is replace all of these with just part. Now imagine we didn't write this out at all, and this is our first time going through the script and writing it out. All we have to do is write part instead of game dot workspace dot spawn location dot pathfinding link dot cool part and uh, dot color. As you can see, all we did is part. Obviously, we still have to have the dot color there because part is only equal to this. And no, you can't do part dot uh, color or anything like that. We can't do cool part dot color and then uh, change it here. Part equals that obviously won't work. Or not obviously, but basically what it does is this part will equal the color value. And obviously, um, you can't update the value like that. Basically, what happens is it becomes the color value. It doesn't actually become the property. It becomes the actual value. So we can, you know, go to another part and we can set dot color equals part, and that will work. But what happens is the color, this variable, is going to become the color value. It won't become the actual property. We can't do part equals. It's just going to be uh, the actual value. It's not going to be the property. I hope that makes sense. But now I'm going to hit run, and as you can see, all we have to do is part dot color, and our disco thing is now working. So, as you can see, that was pretty easy, and the next thing we want to talk about is uh, the conditions I said we talked about earlier. So, when you create a variable name, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. First thing is, you can't start with a number. Um, I cannot do this equals, let's do a string, hello, and uh, as you can see, we have an error, expected identifier, you know, it just doesn't know what it means. You can't start with a number. We could do, you know, n and then like that. And uh, obviously this works as a valid variable name, but we can't start with a number. We can even do an underscore like that. We can do that, but we cannot start with a number. Um, another thing I want to talk about are uh, you know uh, statements that are reserved by Lua. So Lua is a scripting language that we're using, and there are a few statements that are reserved. For example, one that you already know is function. Function is a statement that's reserved, and basically we can't uh, create a variable called function. That's because function is a reserved word. As you can see, it even changes color in the script to let us know that it's reserved, and we can't use it. So as you can see, um, obviously I do need to set a variable name here. I'm going to call it cool variable. It, it's equal to hello. Now I want to show you guys if we type local cool variable like that. As you can see, um, there's no underlines or anything like that. That's because um, these are two different variables. If I were to set this to goodbye and we printed both of these print cool variable uh, and then over here we do print cool variable like that it's gonna print hello and goodbye because they are not the same these are two different kinds of variables you can even do cool variable um, not like that but like this and they are still completely different
That's because uh, you know one small thing is changed, they are completely different. Variables are case sensitive. The next thing I want to go over is scope. Now, please pay attention, guys. Scope is one of the most complicated things for new scriptures to understand, but it is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So for this, I'm going to create a little bit of an example here. We're going to type local my variable equals 53, and then we're going to type a function add numbers, and then we can do a first num, second num. And then we could do uh, local. So we're creating a variable. Result equals first num plus second num. So um, in here, if I do print result, as you can see, it's going to print out the uh, result. Obviously, I didn't call the function in. So let's quickly do that. Add numbers uh, 1 and 2. It's going to print out 3 because that's the result. But what if I were to uh, get rid of this line? and print it out here. Well, first of all, we have an error. The script doesn't know what result is. But why is that, you might be asking. As you can see, it prints out nil. We'll go over what nil is later. It's basically just nothing. What happened right here is the script doesn't know what result is. It basically uh, asked itself what result is, and it came up with nothing, because result was defined inside this code block. If you remember from the functions video, we talked about code blocks, and they're basically these uh, you know, pieces of code that have indented code within them. These are code blocks, and any code uh, inside here as you can see, we typed the local. It's it's local to this code block. Um, it cannot be accessed outside the code block. As you can see, there's an error. So what we need to do to counteract this is change this to a global variable by removing local. And if I hit run, as you can see, it still prints nil. Not sure why that happened, guys. I'm going to try again. Print result. And it's still coming up short. Maybe because I was about to tell you guys that local is basically the way you should always go. Uh, please try to never use global variables. It's pretty good that we're having this issue here. And uh, maybe even Roblox did this on purpose. But basically, just don't use global variables. They are a lot slower since local variables are stored on your CPU. And uh, global variables are still stored on the RAM. And they're uh, you know slower to access because of that. So just don't use global variables. But that would have worked. Not sure what happened. Um, I'm hoping Roblox decided and that's our Roblox thing because uh, global variables are bad in their you know on their own so what we do is uh, type local and just leave it at that we can put the print statement in here and everything will be good um, just don't use global variables that's basically uh, all I want to say they're pretty slow and all scripters you know when they're looking at a variable they are looking for local they're not looking for this um, they're looking for local so uh, one more thing I want to go over is my variable can be accessed from anywhere if I do print my variable print result not sure there we go print result it's gonna be uh, my variable in nil 53 and nil and that's because this uh, function right here the result is local inside of here if I were to type print result in here as you saw earlier it worked and that's because the function knew what result is the script doesn't know though because it's local to the function if I were to type in here my variable equals result this is actually completely valid and that's because we're updating a global variable with a local one this is completely valid and, th and this is a pretty good way to do it we will learn about return statements later but right now you guys can do it like this if you're creating a function and you know it's a pretty good way to do it as you can see I printed uh, 53 not sure why it did that um, oh yeah so the function was actually uh, called over here we should be doing it there and as you can see it prints three and that's probably why the result didn't work earlier there we go it worked and oh uh, actually yep so it did work um, right here as you can see we printed result and we didn't print my variable so yeah we just have to call the function in first but um, anyways even though that did work please don't use global variables they're a lot slower and if you're working with people you want to use local everyone's gonna be able to you know notice it easier it's gonna help everyone out so please just make sure you're using local variables and not global ones now I'm gonna talk about nil as I said earlier I'll talk about it nil just means uh, nothing I kind of explained it properly earlier if I were to create a variable and not set it to anything and I were to print this variable out print my variable it's just gonna print nil we even have an underline it prints nil that's because it's not set to anything if I were to set it to high it's gonna print high because now we set it to something as you can see it printed high 
And last thing uh, I want to do, I want to go over in this video is the 200 variable limit. You can only have 200 variables, 200 different variables in a script. But within my, you know, three, four years almost of scripting, I have never ran into that issue. I've never seen what the error looks like. Uh, the 200 variable limit, um, it's just a myth in my head. I've never seen it. But obviously it is real and obviously you may run into it one day. But, um, you know, within four years I haven't ran into it, so there's a great chance you won't run into it. Um, if your script is really well, you know, done, if it's done properly, you will never run into this error, I can guarantee that. So just make sure you are scripting, you know, so staying efficient and using your variables. So the last thing I do want to go over is the homework for uh, this video. And the homework for this video is just going to be... Uh, do the just do the whole disco thing we did again, but instead, uh, you know, use something else like uh, instead of spawn inside spawn location, insert something like a point light and change the color. As I did show you guys earlier, how to set the color, it's the exact same thing. Uh, you can go back and look. It's just a uh, color three dot new. So I'm just gonna insert a script in here. Ignore what I do here. I'm just gonna do script dot color equals color three dot new. That's it. You're gonna type color three dot new. Do this, and then in here you can click this little color icon and set it to something. If you don't see the color icon, just uh, you know, set the color of the point light by clicking here and then setting it, and then copy these numbers, paste them in here, and then set it back to what it was. But other than that, guys, that is your homework for this week. And yeah, not this week. I don't know why I keep saying this week, but that's your homework for this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.